Well, good morning, everybody. This is Dr. Anthony Chang from AI Med. And um, we were very, very excited to have a very special guest from Canada today uh, in Ottawa, Dr. Louise Sun, who is a duly educated, trained um, clinical clinician and anesthesiologist, and also a data scientist. So welcome, Louise, to AI Med. Thanks for uh, having me, Anthony. So uh, you were chatting earlier this morning um, in the middle of this pandemic. How have you adjusted um, being a um, essentially a heart hospital? What have you seen and how are you uh, managing around the pandemic? Uh, so uh, that's a great question, uh, Anthony. Um, so we're an acute care cardiac center. So we focus on uh, on uh, the uh, referral cardiac cases over here. Um, so fortunate for us in Canada, uh, the, uh, the the curves have been flattened in many areas. So in the province of Ontario, where I reside, uh, it, it really we have about a third of the country's uh, COVID cases. Where in, whereas in our neighboring province, Quebec, we have about half of the uh, COVID cases in the country. So we are in the hardest hit provinces. Uh, but fortunate for us, our wards are not packed with uh, COVID patients. But unfortunately for our patients, our words are packed with uh, the spillover effects of uh, COVID, which means that people are either not presenting uh, when they have a heart attack or stroke during the COVID season, just for fear of contracting the virus in the emergency department or in hospital, uh, or <clears throat> A little too late, uh, so uh, so so they're presenting more sick, and uh, they're uh, they're uh, 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 they're more decompensated at the time they uh, they present. So our primary job, believe it or not, has been to persuade people to recognize the early signs and symptoms of uh, cardiovascular disease presentation yeah. and to do it a little earlier. Now you you're doing some great work with population health in the cardiovascular space. Are you expecting to see an uptick in cardiac morbidity and mortality during this very stressful time for everybody? Uh, I think that in reality, Anthony, yes. Uh, but uh, but it's also true that uh, when we're looking, trying to capture events using uh, population-based uh, uh, databases, that um, if patients don't present uh, with a particular complaint, and uh, rather if they passed away at home or uh, or, or in the long-term care facility, there's no way for us to ascertain the exact cause of death. So, you know, whether it's infection related, so, you know, did they contract yeah. COVID and pass away versus if it was a del delayed disease presentation that's that's causing the, uh, uh, the, the death or decompensation, that might be a little more difficult to ascertain. So I think in a way, we may never truly ascertain the magnitude of, uh, of the spillover impact of, uh, of this disease. Now, the um, one of the symptoms, as we know from um, the virus is um, chest pain. So have you had patients that come through a heart hospital with chest pains and ended up not having a myocardial infarction, but uh, in fact has um, COVID? Um, so, so far, no. Uh, but having said that, um, we, uh, we, we actually are fortunate to not have an overt number of uh, COVID positive patients who presented. But of course, you know, we've had a number of uh, uh, false alarms here where people are presenting with some degree of respiratory symptoms and, uh, yeah. and, and you know, ended up really having a heart attack. But they, they presented perhaps a little too late with uh, many signs of decompensation instead. Well, Louise, thank you for um, your time today and also being a frontline clinician. And I knew you're doing some um, great work in terms of looking at the data science aspects of heart patients um, at a very, very high level. What's a, a major takeaway that you'd like to leave with our audience on the use of data science in, in cardiology during, especially during a very stressful time like this? Right. So uh, I think that, uh, you know, one of the takeaways would be that uh, um, 
big data is very important uh, in, in the modern era, especially uh, during uh, during a time of crisis like this. And I think that uh, data should be made readily available and uh, readily shareable uh, with mm -hmm. anyone who has the ability to leverage it uh, to uh, and, and to do something with it for the for the public good. Uh, so, for instance, at ICES, uh, which formerly was known as the Institute for Clinical Evaluative Sciences, uh, where I'm an adjunct scientist, uh, what we're doing during the crisis is that uh, we're making population-based administrative data readily available to collaborators. Uh, so, for the purpose of real-time modeling of disease impact and you know any making any projections so that we could be prepared um, as a whole to uh, to combat the virus better. Uh, we're making uh, information such as any COVID tests being administered and any testing results available on an almost daily basis, which is very powerful. And we're also making uh, mechanisms for ascertaining outcomes readily available. And so, you know, that enables some of the work that uh, uh, that uh, uh, our team is working on, such as prediction of uh, uh, who's going to uh, be COVID positive amongst those who are screened, and also prediction of who's going to to present uh, very sick in the intensive care unit. Uh, um, uh, of uh, those patients who present with mild symptoms initially. And also, I think that uh, I would encourage people to not just look at uh, things that are directly COVID related, but, you know, data, even non-COVID data could be leveraged well uh, and creative yeah. to look at uh, the impact of COVID in the non-COVID patients. So, you know, yeah. early we were alluding to that we spent a lot of time trying to get our patients in early when they uh, present with severe cardiovascular symptoms. And uh, one of the biggest collateral damages of COVID is really universally we're postponing elective surgeries around the world. Wow. And the problem with that is that, uh, you know, some surgeries can't really wait. So cancer surgery is one and heart surgery is the other. So, you know, in the cardiac surgery world, we, we unfortunately have a lot of patients with very advanced diseases and delaying surgery has been shown wow. to you know, increase the amount of weightless mortality and also acute disease presentations. Yeah. So we, we leveraged, for instance, you know, the big data over here at the Ottawa Heart Institute uh, to uh, to actually create a capacity planning tool for ICU use um, if patients should present for whatever kind of surgery based on the personalized characteristics. Yeah. And uh, we're also uh, using machine learning and advanced uh, statistical techniques to predict who's actually going to get sick and decompensate when they're on yeah. the, the procedure wait list. And so nice. I think, yeah, so all of these things uh, will hopefully also help out. Yeah, no, I see this pandemic, uh, one of the dividends is probably an even deeper understanding appreciation for the coupling between data how to use that data well and how accurate that data is and machine learning and artificial intelligence techniques. So Louise, sure. thank you so much for your time today and um, please be safe and healthy. Thank you, you too.